Where's this kid? He didn't think he could cut it. I figured it was just the usual jitters. I take him under my wing. He was wanting to be scared. Pearl Harbor is the greatest intelligence failure in American history. This can never happen again. I want to make it right. At least some of the boys still want to fight. The Japanese are planning something bigger. So what's the target? We believe it's Midway. Washington disagrees. Washington is wrong. If we lose, the Japanese own the West Coast. Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles. Oh, burn. We got the order to launch. We need to throw a punch so they know what it feels like to be hit. We're talking about a couple dozen planes against all Japanese fleet. This isn't a fair fight. I don't know how to lead these men. You know that you came through when people are counting on you. You'll be able to face anything. I'm Tracy Bond with Irish <clears throat> Film Critic here today interviewing the two stars of Midway. I have Ed Scrine who plays Dick Bess and Lou Kleintank who plays Clarence Dixon. Welcome to Dallas. Thank and you how very are much. How you all doing yeah. today? Good. I want you all to tell me about Midway and, uh, and then I'll maybe ask each of you individual questions. But if you'll start and just let me know and the audience know about Midway and what it's about. Well, it's, it's about the Battle of Midway, which is the, the, uh, a, a decisive naval battle that, that turned the tide of the war um, in the Pacific arena and therefore um, the global arena in, in, in World War II. Our, our movie begins with, with the attack on Pearl Harbor and um, the devastation that ensued. The, uh, the, and then uh, there's, there's some uh, missions in, in the Marshall Island raids and coral seas, but it all accumulates in, in the Battle of Midway, and, um, which was a battle which if you watch the movie you feel like it's unbelievable, and this is Hollywood rewriting history again. However, what's incredible is this is so historically accurate, and this stuff really happened, the heroics of these men, and a lot of it, the dialogue that we use is taken verbatim from first-hand accounts. Mm -hmm. It's phenomenal. I, I, I'd re be reading books and saying, yeah. hey, they stole it from our movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. And many people don't know about this battle, but it is regarded as the greatest battle in the U.S. naval history in the Pacific arena, so, um, which is amazing. And, I'm, and, I'm, I, and it's amazing that many people don't know about it. And that is true. And I did see the film, and it is a wonderful film. And I just got chills down my spine, even though I had read some of it. It was just so realistic to me. So how did you all prepare for a role? I know uh, there's the big thing about you being young, and they want younger people to understand. So how did you, as a younger person, prepare for a role uh, that went back in time? Well, I feel like I've been stuck in the 1940s hmm. for the last five years. I've been. I've been doing roles in the 1940s for a long time, especially ones uh, in the World War II era. So for me, I, I'd already done a bunch of research and I've been doing it for a long time now. Um, but uh, my character, Dickinson, he was 28 at the time. 
And when we filmed the movie, I was 28. So uh, I feel like as men, we were kind of in the same age range, maybe the same mentality. Yes, I know it was a different time, but age is age. And so uh, that was something that I felt really connected to him about. And then just, you know, doing as much research as I could about the specifics of this battle specifically. Um, there's a lot of documentaries, there's a lot of verbiage, there's a lot of um, articles about it. And then on top of that, my character wrote a book called The Flying Guns, which he wrote six months right after the Battle of Midway. And it kind of goes through the beginnings of Pearl Harbor when he flies into Pearl Harbor, and then it just goes to the end of the Battle of Midway. And he speaks about his experiences, he speaks about uh, his fears, he, he speaks about the men that he lost, he speaks about his struggles, he speaks about his family. Um, so it was really kind of a, uh, uh, just a, like a, kind of like a Bible for me it's, that I could go back to and I could hear his voice. Um, and the fact that he was 28, I could hear his voice and I could see my voice and his voice and it was, uh, it was really nice. And, and in the film, there were several platforms to me on loyalty, which was uh, loyalty to yourself as a human being, loyalty uh, to the men uh, that you worked with, as well as to your families. Um, how did you approach that in just trying to leverage each of those uh, areas in the film? Me and Luke are very loyal people. You know, I'm, 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 I'm a family man. I have, I have small children. But I'm also just loyal to my family and my friends. It's something that's very, has been ingrained in me from a very young age. And it's, it's, it's a, one of the many things that we have in, in common that helped us to connect. You know, my real emotional access point for that kind of loyalty was, was my kids and the missus. You know, this notion that what, what it would be like if I was on a carrier and I knew that but the, 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 where they lived had been attacked. You know, you lose your best friend. You know, your, your, your daughter and your, your, your wife is there. That's enough motivation to get up in a tin can in the frontier of aviation combat and dive bomb at 300 miles an hour vertically down on an aircraft carrier with all types of flak coming at you in zeros, trying to take you out. You know, it is... Um, it's an incredible motivation and of course it's difficult for us to relate entirely to these men and their bravery. We, we haven't experienced sacrifice on, their, on this level um, and in a way our loyalties have never been tested to that level. But as I say, you know, we access the, the, the loyalty and the kind of moral world views that we have and, and, and and try to enhance them and, 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 but also, you know, sometimes there's an inclination when you're acting or, or when you're preparing for something to try and make it big and huge, but, you know, loyalty is loyalty and these emotions are, when they're pure and true and honest, that's huge in itself. So we just kept to, tried to keep it honest and um, yeah, I hope people can feel that when they watch the movie. And that is true, because uh, I felt it. and. Uh, it says that uh, director Roland Emmerich had 20, this film is 20 years in the making. Mm. So um, I'm sure that there were just so many things um, going on at every time. And in all the seriousness of this, just tell me, what was your what was your personal outlet? So you wouldn't get so caught up in the serious. Did you have just a personal outlet uh, that you had to go to and just bring yourself back each time you went to it? It helped having Luke there. Yeah. You know, we would talk a lot of ish in between, oh, okay. you know, when we could and, we, you know, we'd go out and, you know, have a drink or whatever on the weekends, not going crazy, but, you know, we would, um, we, we, it, that helped a lot because I'm, I'm a, like I say, I'm a real family and community man and obviously I left my family and community in East London to come out to Hawaii and Montreal, so, you know, you can be quite isolated and it can be quite affecting and you can sort of come home from these days, these dynamic days with 300 people on set or 600 people on set and then just be alone immediately and it can be quite overwhelming in some ways and hard to decompress. So I think it's a really good question actually. Um, you know, and it's also just like, you know, FaceTiming with the kids and everything, reminding yourself of who you are and what you have at home and that's why having a 
anchors back home, mm. emotional anchors and a strong family foundation, that's, that's, that's where it can be really valuable. And um, I always try and tell young actors to try and have as much of a anchor base back home. They don't need to go out and have kids or they don't need to get married or whatever, but you know, make sure you have your people that you can open up to. And that's great. That's a great idea. And in closing, uh, could each of you just tell me one thing that you hope audience will get from it? Um, I hope that when they, they walk away from this, they feel a sense of uh, pride, a sense of respect. I, I would hope that um, they realize that, A, we're remembering these men, these men that sacrificed a lot for, to pave the way for our future. and. Um, my children's future and, and so on and so forth but also to realize that this is not uh, just about heroicism it, there is a lot of tragedy in this as well and um, uh, war is, is not a great thing so how do we move forward and um, so that we don't have to lose these brave men so that they can go on and, and maybe do other things that are just as heroic and just as brave but um, but also to, to know that the U.S. Navy and the Imperial Japanese Navy, these were all wonderful men, and we don't vilify anyone. Um, these were soldiers, and uh, we should have respect for everyone globally, so. I say gratitude. And that too, yeah. And to give thanks for the relative privilege and relative peace that we're living in, opportunities that we have to not be too self-absorbed in, you know, peace times enable us to be self-absorbed and feel sorry for ourselves and all of that and to maybe forget the bigger picture and forget how incredibly lucky we are to have been born in this time, even though everything ain't been perfect and there's still a lot of, um, you know, inequality and ignorance around. Um, be grateful, okay. be grateful. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, men, for your thank time. You. I appreciate that, and it's a great film. Everyone look forward to it. Uh, Midway opens November the 8th, and thank okay. you. Thank, thank you. you.